your boy Pooney Moa. And your queen. Welcome back to Why Ooze Podcast. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, without you guys, this cannot be possible. Amen to that. You know, and we're going to dive right into it like we always do. Happy hour, our segment one, but we have a few topics. And then uh, segment number two is going to be Why Ooze Game Time. And we like to call this show, or game show, Who's Dumb and Who's a Dumbass? And then segment number three, uh, I want to say just our listeners who like to just uh, send us notes and have us uh, answer your questions. And without further ado, we're going to chime right to it. Ooh, have you heard of this? Hell no. No, I'm the boss. Because I'm the queen. <laughs> Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. At what point do you stop addressing a man or a woman young? You know, when we're all adult and we're doing adult business, I feel like we should address everybody uh, just out of respect. I see where you're getting at, but my question to you is, do people find it offensive to be called young? Is that why this question was presented? Or yeah. That could be part of the question. Do they like to be called young? It rubs me the wrong way. Be like, hey, here's a young man. We're doing um, the same job. And maybe it's just me, though, Queen. That's why I just feel like, hey, you know what? Let's bring that up. That's a good question. Yeah. Because you're right. It, it could be an individual, you know, that's their insight. That's how they feel. And that's how they, you know, it depends on how they take it. Or even it, it also depends on how the person uh, communicated that to you, you know, it like how they sound when they pronounce it or just say, Hey, you young man, that could be very mm. effective. You know, like I know young man, but other people are like, Hey, young man, as a kind of respectful thing, you know, Shit, these days I would might be saying, "Hey, young woman, yeah, what's up?" <laughs> See now, now with that question, it could actually go both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Does young people enjoy that? Even us uh, senior citizens being called <laughs> uh, "A O G" or "Hey, chief." So that that's kind of like a all around question. Do people? Do you think you know within your experience uh, in your walk in life, have ever felt like you know? Does people? Does that bother people? You know? I, I, Shoot, I don't know. That's why I just, it's a topic I figure, hey, let's talk about it. Yeah, it's good we're talking about it. You feel like not being called a young man because you're in the same work, you work in the same job, you get the same pay, you pay your bills and all that. Me, I know people who get mad about it, you know, get irritated about it. But then there are also some people who don't even really mind or even, you know, really think about it. But this is really digging into this, uh, the word young to to reference young man or young you know young woman i don't really use that a lot i just uh use the regular i don't know not the term but i just say hey mr or miss could that be the same thing if we say mr and mrs and madam all, all that yeah. and right right it's a <laughs> it depends on your surrounding or the kind of co- a job career that you have right it's just even, or, or i don't like to be called mr <laughs> you know but I also don't don't like to be called, addressed as a young man or even a big boy. So what's the difference between young man and what's up, bro, or young man, young woman? You say you don't like to be called big bro, but bro's okay. Oops. Uh, bro is, is good, you know what I'm saying? But not big man. Thanks, big man. Gotcha. Well, you it depends know? on the city or the, the state that you're in. You know, that's maybe just how people talk. They're not used to it. Growing up in Northern California, when you move to places like Southern Cal, they have a whole different way of talking. Then, of course, going to the South and all that, you hear a lot of that, uh, madam or ma'am. <laughs> right. So, it, like you said, it, it really it depends on the area that you're in or your location, right? I guess we, we put that in the category of slang. It's just a, a, a way of how people talk in that area. Well, you got to be careful, too, um, also when you're addressing people, because it's uh, you got to be respectful and you also have to avoid making assumptions about people's age. Right. Unless it's specifically relevant to the conversation. 
you know, you just don't want to out, just out, just come out and and say with, you know, hey, young man and young woman, but you, so you're already assuming that person is younger than you or just young, period. So that's the kind of things you want to look at it, you know? Yeah. So it's a, it's all about being aware, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, we always hear this thing like, oh, man, this, uh, you know, the, the old saying now, which I feel like it's uh, saturated, is the fact that, oh, man, we're living in, a, in the age or the day of sensitivity. Uh, I'm starting to uh, not feel that way anymore. I feel like, oh, you know what? Just being aware is not. We're living in an age where uh, naive is not the way to live. It's, it's good to be educated because some, or at least knowledgeable for people and the way they want to be addressed, right? Because, mm-hmm. like you said, you can be in what industry of work that you're aligned in, or even in a a, a religion or culture. You know, that plays a factor, so. You know, you brought a good point about, you know, age of sensitivity. Mm-hmm. You're right. It could be of us, you know, um, just us being ignorant on things. And then once we learn, you know, that you want, you understand why and people act the way or feel the way they do, but yet we label them sensitive. So that's a right. very good topic. This could be one of the things that people do not talk about, but it bothers people. So that's it's why it's one of them you. secret. Them uh, what they call that? They kept secret or something that's not been shared. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. aware. People are aware, but it's them hidden. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like them hidden topic or discussion that you know you don't want to address because you don't want to feel like oh, or you just got so immune to, you know, the regular. Mm hmm. That's just an uncomfortable right. topic to speak on. Mm-hmm. And you're just bringing it to the table. You're just bringing it to light. Some people never even thought about it. Like I've never thought about it. But since this topic, you know, came through uh, our platform through you and now I'm actually thinking about it. And I never even once thought about it. So there you thank go. You. Was it Joe? Was it Joe? Joe. That- Yosefa. Mm-hmm. Yosefa. Thanks for bringing this up to Pooney so we can actually talk about it. You know what it was? I felt uncomfortable because I'm like, you know what, bro? I don't like that. I don't appreciate you tell, uh, saying, uh, addressing him as a young person because uh, obviously he's a young man who uh, who has a business, who is, you know, has his own business like the rest of us. And uh, we have we have this platform where we're trying to do things. And, um, you know, I guess that's where it came from. Oh, so basically, some type of way. It's kind of we're like, hey, all adults. We're all adults. That's the way I look at it. I just want to be uh, treat everybody equal. You know what I'm saying? Don't look at me like we, you looked at me when we were kids. Yes. Different. They, different yes. Keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> different level. Look at your head and your facial expression. <laughs> right. Uh, so what basically, is that? Uh, I'm, I'm an adult <laughs> now. So. Do what not is that? talk to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Maybe one of them uh, things, could, uh, what is that, PTSD? Post-traumatic mm. uh, uh, stress came off. Where it's kind of like, uh, maybe because Puni Mo was, uh, it reminded me of my uh, early 20s when I was being treated like that. I'm like, hey, man, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not like a young it. man. <laughs> it right? triggered something. It, it triggered, triggered something. definitely triggered something, man. You definitely got into your feelings when uh, you got, you were triggered. <laughs> Right, especially when I'm be like, "Hey, man, you know what? Uh, I didn't appreciate you. That's what I should have said. I don't appreciate you addressing other peers of ours who we're having, you know, within business with, addressing them with them like young or stuff like that. Let's keep it professional, you know. Mm-hmm. Like give them the same. Res- oh, like we went back. Let's go back. We talked about respect and addressing them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we knew we know each other, and we grew up together. So don't look at me at the same light when I was younger. It's just that's what would be like me if I look if I spoke to you all different sideways, but you're you're an adult also. I'm not gonna there sit here go. and say, hey young man, know your place, stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. No, no, we're business partners. Tell them hello. We have the same voice. You have a seat at the table, I have at the we ha- I have a seat at the table. So we're gonna come together and talk things out. <laughs> don't address me as look look at here, little cuz or little bro, little oose. Nah, man, we're on the same level right now because we're all adults. 
That's where you're coming from, Puni Ma? Is that that's what went down? You know, as we're having this conversation, yeah, that's exactly what went down. But it wasn't even Puni Moa. Puni Moa I know, that's what I'm saying. Stepping you... up for, uh, for the other young man, because maybe he probably didn't give a two shits about it. But, you know, to me, I feel like I'm speaking for 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 those that feel the same way Puni Moa felt when he was in his 20s. St- standing up for them, you know what I'm saying? Shedding that light. And also, you can reverse that, too, for adults, right? For us, now that I'm in my 40s, and being called like a OG, oh, that you know, I enjoy calling other people OG, but now I'm in that area or at that age. Now I'm getting to dress the same thing. I'm like, oh snap. Maybe I should have checked myself back then too and asked them, hey, you know, how would you like to be addressed? There you go. That's all I'm saying. And thank you for stepping up for the young brother or the young ooze. And I um sometime like in our culture, we don't want to disrespect our older brothers or sisters or even cousins. Maybe that's why that uh, that individual did not say anything, just out of respect. They, you don't want to hurt the feelings, but I'm glad you recognized it and you addressed it. And that's also you 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 basically addressed it. So kudos to you, Puni, for addressing that. <laughs> there you go. And uh, what would you like to? Uh, I guess the uh, to close out this topic is to uh, for those that do care, you know, or feel some type of way about it. Maybe it is nice to, uh, you know, if you meet somebody first, or let's just say, let me take that all back, erase what I just said. When you bring your friend or your nephew into a professional place, and you you end up with somebody like Pony Moore. Who do more enjoys everybody being treated equally, you know? And that's where I'm at with that one, Queen. What do you think? Or what do you want? Do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, basically when you're in business together, that's what we're talking about. And your family or longtime friends, when you're at the table business, it's all about business. Age don't matter when you're out there. Whether you old or young, whatever, it don't matter. The fact that you're sitting at the table, you're all business partners. And if you have a problem, speak up. Don't hold it back. Just speak up. Bring it up. And address it like Puni Moa did on the side. And if it has to be addressed in front of everybody, then so be it. But you're all one. Business partners. Keep it business. So, Queen, here's my yes. next question. Okay, man. You know, uh, from a coconut perspective, are action songs overrated? Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know how, you know, Samoan churches, there's a lot of time, specifically the youth, the youth of our generation or the youth of the ministry, when they do their ministry or, or they're doing their performance or a number, or we like to call it a skit, them kind of events or a whatever you call that kind of stuff. They uh, A lot of times Samoan churches have them doing, you know, they're playing a soundtrack or not a soundtrack, but they're just playing a song with an artist that are singing and they're basically not lip singing, but they're actually doing the action songs. They're actually doing actions to the song. My question is, is it outdated? Is is it outdated just like how we talked about graduations with, uh, you know, the over, uh, with the, not just the Olale now, you know, and they're, they're now bringing out like a, a floaters. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of other stuff going on mm-hmm. now. And that's where I'm at with this question. Is this an over oh, outdated uh, new thing to present to the church, or especially for us who are visiting a church and we're guests? Maybe it's outdated to the individuals who grew, who grew up with it. But you mentioned people who come to visit. It's not outdated to them because it'll be something new to them. But then also, if there's someone visiting the church, we grew up doing action songs. We grew up, you know, Lokomeki, White Sunday for children. You did action songs for verses. You remember, there's there's songs like, read your Bible, pray every day. There was actions to that. Deep and wide, you know, all that. There's actions to everything. That would be outdated to me because we do it all the time. It's like a memory verse. But the songs you're talking about, when people do action, the youth do that, does action for it. 
sometimes that's just the way of delivering a message. And, and there's different people that get receive messages different. It's either through just talking or dancing or this, well, here you're talking about action songs, you mm. know? So there's different, like I said, like there's different ways of learning. So when though there's also different ways of receiving messages. And yes, it could be outdated for those who does it all the time, but it's not outdated for those who are um, visiting or receive messages through actions of a song that makes it more, more heartfelt. You know what I'm saying? That's mm. my opinion on that one so far. That's a good way to look at it too, uh, you know, to have a, our viewers here that, you know, I appreciate you looking at all angles of, you know, for the yes and the no, right? That's why I figure I bring that up because for, for Puni Moore, I'm definitely done and de <laughs> dusted. Done and dusted or done and whatever you, whatever the you know, news is. sound like if Puni Moore goes in and sees it, he's like, oh, here we go again. But doesn't even give a chance, an opportunity for the youth to minister. It's like you went in with your ears shut. I should. I'm messing with you, Puni Mo. <laughs> no, you keep going. No, you do. You, hey, hey, no, no. Speak your facts. You know what I'm saying? So speak you know, your truth. Don't even hold it. Don't even hold back. It's a great conversation. So you, you have selected, you have elected, not to listen, and already prejudged the the thing. Not judging it, but you just say, "I'm done with this." So I'm not even going to pay attention to it. Basically, you're just sitting there. With your hands folded, the arms folded across your chest, and being very decisive, just or whatever the word is, or you're just sitting there letting time pass. You're not. You're not just the type. You're just the type that does not receive messages that way. You get messages other ways. You know. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You. You're just a different type of person. Everyone's different. So it's not, it's the, so the question really, it's not about, is it outdated? I guess it's something like, you know, how should we, how should I start bringing that? It's more of for Pony more to just to have a topic to, when I see something, I'm like, you know what, let's talk about that, Queen, right? I guess, I know the question is correct though, right? Is it outdated or not? So from That's your perspective, so your perspective, uh, you know, you can see the yes and know the reason why not. It really depends on the person that do enjoy that kind of stuff. Now, with that said, I will say this, though. I will say that if I see, like, little kids that are aged, who, what age do they normally able to move? Maybe four or five years old, all the way to maybe 11 uh -huh. years old, doing them little action. I, I will be like, oh, that's what's up, you know? I will enjoy that. But to see, like, the, the younger, uh, like, high school kids and up, grown young adults, Doing them kind of actions uh, to me, I'm like, oh, that's overrated. It's almost the <laughs> same, you know. It's like uh, when we're doing Sifa Side more because it's just not church. It's also to me, I even when uh, we have, especially when we're having like Asian Pacific nights, and then you know, a lot of time that it, up too, in the yes. military, they're doing the they're they're playing the soundtrack, right? But I get it. There's time where you can do it because you don't have a band, a live band there. Or to even sing it. I get that part. But there's a lot of times kind of like, okay, that's the go-to now, you know? Just play a soundtrack or play a song and let's just do some actions to it. So it's kind of like, all right, well, I don't know. It's to each its own. Yeah. The, pro the performers just got to bring it to catch audiences. Maybe that's question. what it is. Maybe that's what it is. I, I'm just not impressed by their... Uh, performance maybe this the thing is still cool if they've impressed putting more with some i don't know flipping over the uh, on the air doing some 360 moves you know be like oh wow or be more involved like uh like their feelings into it i guess that's what it is i think putting more is just being uh what's the word kind of like those old timers like oh man bring it back to them days where you said you know uh, be invested in the time that you're you're doing these actions where your whole emotions are all in there. You know, it's kind of like they're just doing it just to do it. Feels like yes. they're doing it kind of like a, at a white Sunday, right? Yeah. At white they're Sunday at church. They're forced to. Forced well, the kids to. forced to. 
<laughs> that's where it sucks at. But when you see like actual kids, you know how we see on social media when they're actually shooting some of them that are so into it and they make they make you laugh, you know, because mm-hmm. yeah, that kind of stuff, I like it. But when it's kind of like, yeah, I guess it's to me, it's the performers. If they're yeah. not putting in the work, right? They're yeah. just half-assing it. Maybe that's probably why Pony Moore has a uh, I want to say that's how I am. Yeah, you it. have to be into it and you right. gotta be proud of what you what you're representing. You know, because we can tell, you know, sitting there watching them. And if they're not if they're not into it, they're just up there waving their arms, not smiling, or just the body, the body speaks a lot, you know, when you de- when you're trying to deliver a message. So I'm just like, nah, this person don't even care about it. So why should we care? <laughs> So did you, uh, you know what, let's go about more about this. Do have, you have any experience that you'd like to share with our uh, viewers where you were in that, you know, in your time when you was uh, in the youth and you had to, you know, do some action sounds. Was there a time where you were that one, the one that didn't care? Or were you that type that, oh, man, I'm going to give it my all. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, you have any uh, interesting, uh, you know, history of yourself that you'd like to share to our community? Of course. Did a lot of that growing up, you know, growing up in the Uncle of old, you know, down in the Bay Area. We did all that. Every summer we have performances, and you know, White Sundays and so forth. I love performing. I love doing the sa-sa and all the singing because that was the same. That, I mean, that was the opportunity for me to also learn my culture because, you know, we're not in Samoa. We're in the Bay Area. So that was the only way is going to church and also home when the parents speak to you in Samoan. But when you go there, you start learning the songs, start learning to dance. So you're all into it, you know. And my mindset was always we could dance better than the kids back home. Oh. <laughs> that was my whole model. <laughs> if we can do it, you know, we can do it better, you know, but we can't speak the language better. But these days probably can, but just talking smack. But now, yeah, was that, that was, was that my that mentality. You Oh, that was your own individual Queens main tally, or that was you and your posses? It was me and a lot of our a lot of our um youth gals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we just thought we was like, we is the shit. <laughs> you, got little, you guys were the best. Ain't nobody can touch me. <laughs> was there like an experience where you uh so that's obviously were you the star of the show, you know? You always have the, the one that stands out, right? There's always that one star of the youth that always stands out there. That gravitate to everybody's attention, you know, with the movie. No, that. I wasn't that person, but I I know someone of it. And yes, there's always that one person who just everybody just like glues to and keep their eye on because such a great performer, you know. Mm. I know when I played like cricket, the... I used to do crazy stuff too, you know, with the mm. Faluma and stuff. So ah, okay, okay, yeah. But, and then uh, with the when it comes to the dance, you know, the performing uh, with the songs playing, you have to do the action of it. Was there a time that you, uh, you know, the other experience where, oh, uh, man, you were forced to, you know what I'm saying? Um, nope, there was one time I was never forced to dance because I always loved it. Mm, but there okay. was one time where um, I actually moved to Samoa and I was in the youth, but I never went to practice <laughs> to end of the dances. But we went on a Malanga, came back into the Bay Area, you know, Seattle, you know, all the up and down the the uh, west and i did not practice i went on there and performed like i knew what i was doing <laughs> oh you were the, so the, i like to call those the last minute or the ones that don't show up but and also i had show all up. the uniform and everything <laughs> okay so let me ask you this now what about the ones that was always faithful from day one and then somebody like you have you experienced those ones that didn't show up to practice, but they'll show up and you know damn well that they mess up the whole routine now because they didn't show up how did you feel? Have you experienced that? Oh yeah, all, all the time. Oh, yeah. then did you? Dude, it wasn't like the worst. Like, oh damn, this they better be way in the back or just be right. behind the whole dance group. <laughs> you better not try to come in the front or in the middle or even on the sides because you're you can easily be spotted. You better be behind behind uh, the dance. Because <laughs> it was always like a, a line, right? And it's a row, yes. right? You got yes. one, two, three. It's kind of like the first string, second string, third string, and fourth guess what string. what I did? I stood way behind because I knew I didn't know the, the routine. Oh, so, so. so you was you was a bench warmer. 
Yes. <laughs> but guess what? I was way in the back and I still did my little movement act like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and I had a lot of money being lawful to me because I was in my hometown. <laughs> oh, okay. So Queen, share to the to our viewers, announce someone, what do you mean by the lawful and the money? So, you know, give it to our viewers what you're talking about so they can kind of see it, but you can see all these stuff on YouTube. On YouTube. Just go, you know, when uh, uh, the Samoan community, they're doing their dances. And then family members, you always see them with dollar bills and they'll just come and throw dollar bills, toss it mm -hmm. up in the air. And with this one particular, a lot of, you know, it's a lot of family and friends that were in San Francisco. And I've been out of the, out of the state for, for a while. Um, and then they came and just start throwing money and, you know, people were clowning and making joke of it. Like, look, this one never comes to practice, but she gets a lot of money thrown at her. <laughs> And I just sit back there, clap my feet, I mean, clap my lap and fuck in my hands, clap my hands, you know, do whatever and just smile and get money thrown at me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Queen, so for me, uh, yes, uh, let's go with the... Uh, I got to hear this, yes. I was, so. I, was uh, I have experience of being a bench warmer, definitely. You know, and that was in my younger age, right? I used to look up to the ones that are like at least a few years older than me. They were the ones that are fun. But as I got into middle school to like junior high and high school, I found myself in the front, you know, well, like in a front row because uh, I love dancing. That's what it was. I enjoyed dancing. And you, like, you're right at that time for us too. That was like the thing. Just love playing a sound, a, a mute, a song and doing some action to it. But, you know, we were really up in our feelings with it too, you know. Like the whole point of if our hands, especially sound mourns when you know, you know when, when you're dancing gracefully or whatever, especially yes. at church, wherever your hand goes, your eyes should go too. You know, yeah, exactly. guiding it. Then you know when it's like a sad thing, you gotta hold show those emotions. <laughs> That's the kind of things that me and my uh partners were all into at the time. And like you would mention on episode one of why it was when we used to practice hours, hours and hours for that, you know, for that routine to get it all down. Sweating off, you know, sweating. It was like a good cardio workout. Man, it was great. Yeah, yeah. we act like we were getting paid for it because we right? took it. So yeah, we took it so serious. It was because because music and dancing was such a great thing. Like, it was a great thing to, uh, I felt like it was more like a stress relief. It was, it was just fun. It was, it was really fun. But then also... Yes. uh Going back to, uh, you know, I, I couldn't stand those uh, those kids, you know, because I was a kid at that time, too. The ones that never show up, they maybe show one or two days of practice. Mind you, there's probably at least 10 practice, you know, separated in the weeks out of the week, right? And them kids will show up. Yeah, they'll be in the back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just to be fillers or like instead of seat fillers, they'll be like in the back there just filling up the rows. But yeah, so that's uh that's where I was at, you know, with the with the whole uh, dancing things with the 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 ones that don't show up, the ones like Queen and them that that don't show up and get all the money still able to match everybody's fundraising. Because a lot of times we used to do it for fundraising for the youth, and it's all for trips, to, you know, or or like uh, towards the end of the year we'll have like those uh you know Christmas gifts. Because a lot of the stuff we you know was for fundraising, right? Right, Queen. Mm -hmm. Right, right. When it came to some more churches. Queens, queens are good at not going to practice and then just come and make and, all that money. And make that money. Make that's it that's money. status. That's, that's high status. Get my level, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I'm first one. string on everything, but, you know, if I don't show up, I'm still going to be there. <laughs> oh, man, that was a good one. So what's the closeout to this one, cuz? How we feel? It's, a, it's a, to each its own. <laughs> to each their own is how they how they look at the dances you know it, the feeling how do you feel and, and, it, and it depends on the performers you know if the performers are good then people will enjoy it but then like i said people receive the messages different sometimes they don't like seeing people dance they just rather hear people talk hmm. Not the, like puni Mo will come in there he's probably tired of it because he grew up with it and he decides on his own to not pay attention and just be closed-minded about it. But that's okay. That's how he is. 
But then if he sees you emotionally into it, when your eyes follow your hands and your emotions follow the, the words and the actions of the Make song. Make me cry. The <laughs> boy is going to actually pay attention and unfold his arms and actually put eyes on you and ears start to listen. Then everything will flow into his heart. Then his emotions will come out. So that's why I'm ending this with. Mm, that's what's up, man. If you cannot make an adult person cry, you know, when it's a sad song or you make them laugh when you know it's entertaining to where the person's supposed to laugh, you're not doing your job, y'all. Get it right, because we used to practice for hours. Don't just try to practice for five minutes or, you know, do this here and there. I said, we took hours. I, I guess it's just a whole different breed, Puni Moa. So it's a... It's a good thing for those who like it and for those that don't like it. Uh, it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's a bad thing, right? It's outdated. I, I, yeah, yeah, man. If, if you're like Pony Moore, you know what I'm saying? If you gotta, if you don't like it, then show up to church and go fix it yourself. If not, <laughs> then just shut the fuck up and move on. <laughs> Participate or just move on. <laughs> yes, sir. Or just don't say nothing at all. Are you dumb or are you a dumbass? First question. Yes. What I'm is ready. the capital city of France? Oh, man. You had to go there. Why did you use like a U.S. one? Because <laughs> you I'm a, a, I'm a traveling I'm man. So I figured, let, let, oh, let me man. see if my brother remembers. What is the capital city of France? I'm gonna give you. Let oh, me give yeah, you yeah, I got it. I got it. Paris. All right, man. My man. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, you better get this one. You know what's messed up, though, Queen? We what? gotta kind of like we, we're gonna have to adjust that. It's just there's no win-win on it. It's a, either you're dumb or you're a dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> Rather be dumb than, than a dumbass. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. Hey, well, you know what? leave a comment, man. <laughs> right, maybe we do have to need to change it, you know? Yeah. So, are you good or are you dumb or a dumbass? <laughs> or right. a dumbass right? <laughs> help us help us out, listeners. Help yeah. us come up with a new name for this one, you know? We also try to speak life into people, but maybe we need to change. <laughs> but here's number two. <laughs> okay, see, we, we figured out what the problem is. Uh-huh, we're have, learning. Have <laughs> yep, 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 there you go. All I right. Did. How many sides does a triangle have? Three. See, I'm making it easy for mm. you, brother. Mm. <laughs> okay, number three. Which planet is closest to the sun? Which planet is closest to the sun? Which so, planet is closest to the sun? Do not Google or Bing. <laughs> Which Stop. planet is close <laughs> to Three, two, uh, oh, uh, Jupiter. Sorry. Is Mars? Mercury. Mercury, damn, <laughs> Hello, All right. I repeated that. I was hoping you would jump in and be like, let me know so I can four The audience, the dumbass. viewers can see he was looking. Oh, I was like, oh, you can tell by the screen. All right. Okay, last question then. Last question then we're done. Mm -hmm. Who painted the Mona Lisa? Oh, man. Who painted the Mona Lisa? I don't know. Oh, is it uh, Leonardo? Uh, yes, we'll say the rest of the name. Damn. You got Leonardo. the first name. Da Vinci. Leonardo Da Vinci. There you go. Damn. Damn. Ah. Damn, I'm just dumb. <laughs> nah, Poonie. <laughs> you did better this week. You did better this week. I got all, what, well, three. Three out of one. You got another question? No, we're good. We're good. You struggled a bit. You know, mm -hmm. you kept trying to go to uh, our brother over there. And yeah, okay. yeah. I okay. didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that, for that last one. <laughs> Good, that's good. All right, that's it for our game show. Um, I hope you guys uh, learned something from Puni Mo and and the Queen answering, asking these questions. So uh, thank you for joining us again on the Wild Oops Game Time. Okay. So, so our next segment, our last segment, is uh, where we get to answer our 
listeners' uh, questions. And there's a few ones since Father's Day, Father's Day just passed. You know, happy belated Father's Day, Father's Day from the Yus. And one of the questions is, uh, what has been the most rewarding part of being a father? Well, since I'm the only father in this show for now, <laughs> I'm just gonna be like it's the it's seeing their little faces. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The smile. It's like seeing your little mini me. This is crazy because I got three kids and just watching all of them faces as they grow up, their personality, uh, pretty much everything my mom and dad used to tell me not to do. And my kids are doing the same thing. They're not doing, they're not listening to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what I like. It's just seeing them grow too. And man, time is flying by. It, I, I do enjoy being a father. That's the rewarding thing about it. It's getting off of work. You show up at home and you got your little rugrats running up to you. That's that's like one of the best things of being a dad. And then the next question they have is, what is a uh, one valuable lesson you've learned from being a dad? Uh, one valuable lesson I learned from being a dad. You got to be firm. Whatever you say to your kids, you know, they're, they're watching your every move. You're, 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 you're their hero, you know, and uh, it's, uh, I guess, as a, as a man, I learned that uh, I need to protect them at all costs, anywhere and any day, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the last one we have here is, how has fatherhood changed you as a person? Oh, man, it changed a lot, queen, queen. Uh, you know, for the listeners, you gotta know me and Queen were first cousins. And uh, what do you think, Queen? Since I became a father, do you see the per- the change in, in the man in this man? Or you know, I guess you can attest to the to this question by you know watching Pony more as I'm get you know growing up. What do you think? How did it change me since I became a father? Well, the obvious re- the obvious thing I see is uh, you matured a lot. Not saying you were always, you know, childless, but you always have a great sense of humor. You love being around family. You're just you're just that fun guy, always joking around. Mm. But um when you first became a father, a lot of your priorities has shifted. And I've noticed it. You know, you slowly cut down on some things and sometimes you just have to detach yourself from events and people where you had to focus on your family. And you mentioned, you know. You like to see their little faces. And when you see little faces, you make sure you provide for them. And that's what I saw in you. You were always a hard worker from the get-go. But you became more you became more mature by, by snipping some of the access in your life that you did not need at the time, but you need it later on. You're, you're a family man, but your family, your priority was your children and your wife. And I saw that. That was the biggest change I've seen is... Cutting back on going out, cutting back on, you know, crazy spending money like on yourself. You always like to buy, you know, bougie stuff, you know, <laughs> but um, all that focus went on to your children. So congratulations. That's what I saw in you growing up as a father. Man, those are so, man, I appreciate that, Queen. I didn't expect that much, but there you <laughs> heard it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a decent person, folks. <laughs> there you are, y'all. She put him more as a good father. But what I did take out of that is uh, definitely responsibility, knowing the difference, right? Oh, and especially knowing your friends start chopping down the circle. There we go. Uh, separating the bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's, so for those uh, single men, whenever you're thinking that, uh, you know, because I never thought I was going to be a father anytime soon. I never thought I would enjoy that kind of life. You know what I'm saying? But it's definitely worth it, y'all. And that is our segment for answering. Hopefully, uh, Tony Moore and Queen answer your questions, man. Continue to uh, post and send us messages. You know, we I, I, de- I personally like this segment. What about you, Queen? I love it. Mm-hmm. I love I love hearing from our listeners and answering questions when we can. You know, and these these are our opinion. Um, don't fault us for it, but if we need to be corrected. Comment on us. We're open to criticism. So constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, and then I got one more before we close out our show. Uh, so I asked my pops, you know, because he has a doctor's degree. And I'm like, you know what, Dad, since you're a senior 
pastor, aka doctor, you know, I want to ask you this question because me and my sister, you know, we like to pick an old man's brain. But like, since you think you missed a know it all, why is a bad word a bad word? <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad said, uh, you know, emphasize what you're saying. What do you elaborate what you're saying? And I'm like, well, you know, the uh, the F word and the A word. And then my dad's response was, those are letters. <laughs> my my sister in the back started dying, cracking up. It didn't ring in my head. I'm like, oh, oh, I, I just, you know, named you letters. That is correct, sir. But you know what I'm talking about? He's like, no, you're just saying letters. What are you saying? I'm like, all right. <laughs> Then I'm like, well, what about the F U C K? <laughs> right? Uh huh. And his response was like, it's only bad if you act on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? So, what is action if you're acting on it? Because oh, it's a bad word. You're just saying it. Right? Yeah. And he said it again. It's only bad if you act on it. What do you think that means, Queen? Basically, when you say it, you're acting on it. So that's why it's bad. The way that's how I'm hearing him saying it. Mm, damn, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to say the word, but you decided to say it. So you're acting on it. Wow. Wisdom, folks. Pony Moore has been schooled on the show today by the OG and Queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Closing remarks. Well, just want to say happy Father's Day. And uh, obviously, I am not a dad, but I am a daughter. And just a few advice out there to you wonderful dads out there. And Puni Mo, those questions were awesome. And your answers were great. And I just like to add on to the fathers. Just, you know, be present. Be there. Um, and just spend time with your family. And just love on them. Basic and simple. But most of all, just be there because time is precious. And thank you all again for tuning in to our YU's podcast. And uh, you guys have a blessed day and blessed week. Mm. And I just want to throw it out there to our viewers, too. Not only that Father's Day, Father's Day just passed. It's also the month of June for men's mental health awareness. So it's a good thing we're talking about this for all our men out there. Stay positive. You find yourself uh, you find yourself stressing out. Tune into Why Ooh's Pod. You know, help us lighten up your day. And also shout out to We Fobs. When y'all get a chance, check out We Fobs podcast. We got a lot of great things coming up, and uh, you know, we keep promoting a uh, gag bag. Stay tuned, folks. You by the time gag bag gets on this platform, you'll hear her voice. The the wait is worth it, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just uh again thank you to our listeners man continue to uh share the word out there to tune in and i'm your boy puny moa and i'm your queen yeah later